Hi, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have created a product JP Entity and we have seen how Hibernate will create a DDL SQL script behind the scene to create product database table. And look at here, Hibernate basically uses, you know, default naming convention to provide a database table name and, you know, de default column names to the fields, right? For example, look at here, this is the Hibernate generated SQL ddl script to create the product table in the database and hibernate by default provided a table name as a product and if you can see the jp entity that is product jp entity we haven't provided a table name to this product jp entity right by default hibernate provided you know table name to this product jp entity as a product it will just you know lowercase the post character okay and hibernate provided these default naming conventions for columns for the for these fields right and we need to customize this table a lot for instance we need to give a proper name to the table and we also need to provide a unique constraint to these columns for example let's say if we want to provide a unique constraint to this stock keeping unit column then we need to you know use the jp annotations and let's say if we want to provide primary key generation strategy like we want to auto increment the id or we need to provide a sequence to you know create a primary key right and we need to provide a size for the columns right so in order to you know customize the table uh, details or table structure we have to use jp annotations all right so in this lecture let's see how to use jp annotations to customize the table structure so in order to configure you know table details for this product jp entity we can use add table annotation from javax.persistence package so now we can give a name to the table for example add table annotation has a different attributes so let's go and let's use name attribute and let's give name to the table for instance different different developers prefer giving different different naming convention for the tables right let's say some of the developer give a table naming conventions like this table underscore products okay or some of the developers prefer you know using a plural form of the entity like products okay so to keep it simple i will give products as a table name so along with a table name you can also provide a schema uh, here itself for example i'm going to use schema attribute and then i can define schema for example our schema is e-commerce right schema or database so let me copy this and i can simply paste it here so in this way you can also configure schema or database for this product jb entity all right great now let me quickly format this perfect now let's go and let's see how to define a unique constraint for a columns all right so let's say in product jp entity we are going to make this stock keeping unit column as a unique constraint so in order to define a unique constraint for this column we're gonna use unique constraints attribute of this annotation so you can see add table annotation has attribute called unique constraints okay so go ahead and use this unique constraint over here and within a unique constraints we can define a multiple unique constraints for multiple columns okay so now i'm going to use add unique constraint annotation to define a unique constraint for stock keeping unit column okay so this annotation has two attributes name and column names so let's go ahead and let's use name field to provide a name to the unique constraint so let's say stock keeping unit unique okay and also provide a column name to which this unique constraint applies so in our case the column name is SKU. okay stock keeping unit all right perfect so this should be unique right perfect so this is how we basically make a column as a unique constraint by using 
at table annotation okay perfect if you want to make you know other columns as a unique constraint then you can go ahead and use at unique constraint annotation like this okay just use name here and let's say if we want to give a unique constraint for product name so you can go ahead and say name unique and also define the column name okay column name is name like this okay so to keep it simple i'm going to define a unique constraint for stock keeping unit column okay perfect so this is how we define a unique constraint for columns in a jp entity all right now i'm going to show you how we can customize the column for the fields let's say we want to change a column name i mean we want to give a different name to the columns for instance let's say i want to give column name for this stock keeping unit like this for instance i'm going to use add column annotation and name and then let's say i want to give different column name something like stock keeping underscore unit all right so in order to customize the column name and column details we can use add column annotation all right so add column annotation specifies the mapped column for the persistent property or a field if no column annotation is specified the default values applied and by default we have seen like hibernate provides a default name to the columns as a field name okay now we have changed a column name for this stock camping unit so i can copy this and i can give column name here okay great now we can also define this column as a not null for that we have property nullable equal to false okay and if you want to make a product name column as a not null then simply you can use add column annotation and you can simply pass nullable equal to false so this will basically make this column as a not null okay perfect so this is how we basically customize a column for the field all right great well you can also mention the size or length for the column for instance add column annotation has a attribute called length you can use a length attribute to define the size by default it is 255 all right so let's keep uh, default as it is now let's go and let's see how we can use a primary key generation strategies to create a primary key for the you know row in the table well jpa or hibernate basically provides four types of primary key generation strategies well in next lecture we will go through these four types of primary key generation strategies but in this lecture i am going to use identity as a primary key generation strategy well in order to define a primary key generation strategy we have to use add generated value annotation and make sure that you choose add generated value annotation from javax.persistence package and this add generated value annotation has attribute called strategy okay go ahead and use strategy attribute and then simply type generation type and identity well basically jpa provides four types of primary key generation strategy auto identity table and sequence in next lecture we will see these four primary key generation strategy as of now let's use identity well identity will basically you know auto increment the table column in the database now we have pretty much customized the product jp entity all right now let's go and let's run our spring boot application and let's see how hibernate will create a table for this jp entity well i am going to run spring boot application now okay and let's see how hibernate will generate a sql detail script behind the scene for this products table and uh, you can see here hibernate generated uh, ddl script and let me compare with product jp entity well you can see table name products and we have configured table name as a product and next you can see primary key generation strategy we have provided identity and this should be a auto increment you can see in a detail script auto increment and you can see 
we have customized the column for stock keeping unit and you can able to see the column name is changed from SKU to stock keeping unit and you can see here not null because we have provided null label equal to false right and again you can see we have provided unique constant uh, for you know stock keeping unit right that we can see a little bit below yeah here you can see hibernate basically generated the alter sql statement alter table products add a constant stock keeping unit okay and this is the basically a uh, unique constant name that we have provided over here all right great so this is how basically we use jp annotations to customize the table structure okay as per our requirement we can provide a table name column name and we can provide a size for the column we can define the unique constant okay we can define the primary key generation strategy all right great now let's head over to the database and let's verify whether this table is created or not i am going to head over to the mysql workbench i am going to refresh the schemas and you can see products table is created okay and you can see all the columns and stock keeping unit so this column has changed right and this product table uh, it was already you know created in one of the previous lecture so i'm going to drop this table perfect now we have products table in our database all right great well in next lecture we'll see four types of gpa provided primary key generation strategies all right so this is very important so let's discuss in the next lecture all right i will see you in next lecture